Nigeria's vast lands and greenery have always projected a wonderful site of huge potential. However, many believe the unending vista provided by her shores indicate her true greatness awaiting for more exploration. On the nation's most eastern shore floats a citadel of learning which offers a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for those ready to answer the questions of great water bodies. The institution provides both the comprehensive data acquisition and rigorous probing of the ocean just over its shoulder. Its current status and vitality is a result of a protracted push and pull with elements bent on drowning a novel dream and a positive actuality. It is gradually rising from the doldrums of dilapidation, neglect and obfuscation. What happened mainly was that uh, the community felt this was a federal project that they should benefit from and so contracts were awarded and you, we, we, we got to a point where what we saw mainly in the school was a lot of abandoned projects, backed roads, not having the right um, um, faculty and trainers, not having adequate training facilities in terms of library, in terms of classroom, in terms of hostels, because all these were at various stages of completion, looking more like abandoned projects than anything. Of course, you expect that the quality of um, certification that will be coming out of there would be questionable. The Maritime Academy of Nigeria Man started as a nautical college of Nigeria. Its mandate was to produce seafarers for Nigeria's maritime industry by ensuring quality training of shipboard officers and ratings as well as shore-based management personnel. This lofty destination was set when the institution set sail in 1977. But for 39 years, this institution was fested with strong winds of corruption and maladministration which threatened to blow the dream off course. Quality learning instruction declined and focus shifted from the maritime to the terrestrial, from objects of the sea to white elephants. However, the current administration injected a new push a new impetus to ensure a speedy and comprehensive turnaround of the academy. Its overall success lies with an eagle-eyed supervisor whose patriotism is matched by an uncompromising doggedness to succeed. Determined to steer this promising academic vessel away from the shallow waters of irrelevance, the Minister of Transportation, Chibuke Rotimi Amechi, began to clear a cluttered deck with a comprehensive audit of both the staff and the operations in January 2017. And in September of the same year, retired Commodore Emmanuel Duja Efedwa was co-opted into an interim management committee to navigate the murky waters and find a promising bay at par with international maritime organization IMO standards. Following the recommendation of the IMC, the new hands faced a daunting challenge which included fallen standard of training, overbloated cadet enrollment, demoralized manpower, infrastructure decay, poor maintenance of facilities, death of teaching aides, inadequate lecturers, makeshift library facilities, poor data management system, abandoned projects, huge debt profile, poor remuneration of staff and a strained relationship 
with the host community. The Academy's climb to renewed relevance started with the appointment of retired Navy Commodore Emmanuel Duja Efedua as the new rector on the 5th of September 2017. And with the steady hands and eyes of the Minister for Transportation and his indefatigable team, the tide of cynicism was turned into that of cautious optimism. There was a huge difference between the first visit I made to my and the subsequent one that we had in the course of our retreat. Uh, there are changes, there are physical changes, and he has kept with his function that we gave. The function was that the institution is not about infrastructure, it's also about faculty. And the institution is really was that he has employed a lot of lecturers and uh, been able to buy uh, infrastructure just to enhance the academics. So it's all it's all right. We can only but congratulate him. For those who saw the reality of the academy, the quantum of rotten decay, assuming this responsibility would be akin to the proverbial building castle in the air. I had already been appointed before I got to know. Um, what I was walking into. I knew that was going to be a challenge, a huge one. The environment was very hostile. But we were able to block leakages and um, we were able to use every cupboard that the government sent in to change the environment. It hasn't been easy, but at least we can say confidently that what they couldn't achieve in 39 years were achieved in three years. Regardless, Nicknamed King Midas of Nigeria's maritime industry, Commodore Emmanuel Efedua proved beyond doubt to be a very good manager of human and material resources. We were able to block leakages and suddenly we saw that we had some money. We were able to complete 99% of the abandoned projects. I think we completed them 100%. The new leadership embarked on an aggressive overhaul and upgrade of the academic infrastructure in the institution. We basically used what you call the estimate process in the military to resolve the challenges of the academy. For example, we identified the problems and uh, we divided them into phases. Um, phase one, we had to tackle the infrastructural deficit, correct most of those problems set up, um, invited auditors to audit the academy financially and physically and um, we talked about we talked about capacity building, how to go side by side with the infrastructure and also a lead time for equipment to come in and then look for the money. The Maritime Academy of Nigeria welcomes you these days with a smile confident of his new look which draws you in from its entrance the main gate has been reconstructed designed to provide double entry and exit posts with adequate access control measures such as barriers anti-terror bollards and surveillance system a new gate reception was constructed for control and management of visitors and other related activities the old building has given way to a magnificent building which currently houses the administrative block, the School of Nautical Studies with smart classrooms, smart chart rooms and the four simulator rooms. One of the signature infrastructure projects is the installation of full mission simulators. To give cadets a sense of reality on the sea, in the engine room or on the water, Simulators are key. Without a simulator, a, a, a maritime training provider cannot say that they are one of the best or the best in that environment when they operate. When we had no simulators, no matter what buildings you have, they are all fancy stuff. So those simulators, we have about four now, um, about five now. Since inception, the academy had no functional simulators. This constituted a huge limitation in the area of practical works. There are now four modern advanced simulators, Full Mission Bridge Simulator FMBS, Full Mission Engine Room Simulator FMERS, the Multifunctional Classroom Simulator 
MFC, which has capacity to seat 30 students per session and over 20 software applications for other standalone simulators and the ocular vision simulator. In, in, in short, there are a lot of areas where the standards of uh, uh, watch keeping and certification, STCW 2010 standards, we call that, required the cadet or the training institution to have a facility to simulate and learn. The objective was, the method of teaching was simulation. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't have the simulators, if, even if it were there, it was not used or it was not working or let's not get into that. So what has happened is the cadets who passed out had a certificate which was sort of depleted in substance. It didn't have the real intensity where a ship owner is just running into the academy to employ cadets. He didn't have any, they came to know that the academy was uh, not up to the standards when it came to training the cadets. The full mission beach simulator and uh, what the exercise we have just done is just ship maneuvering in the confined water. When you are entering or uh, departing the port, you have to talk about, we have to think about traffic density. The pilot must be on board as well because the pilot knows the terrain or the environment. In comparison, we are running a bridge watch keeping preparatory course and he's trained. The best advantage of the simulators are that you can experiment and you can learn. You know, there are many things that you cannot do on actual machineries because of fear of it getting damaged and causing financial losses. But on a simulator, you can do your experiments, you can do, you know, you can change the parameters and see what is happening. Students are brought here to be taught on how to operate, how to attend to alarms, but uh, presently, we are doing it for the students, trying to get them familiarized with the NG room. Um, one of those um, educational aids and facilities that we have in the academy currently, the engine simulator, and it has given us an edge also in our pursuit of academics and experience. A key upgrade, which is particularly crucial to studying on campus, is the library. Before the assumption of the new administrator, the academy, had no functional library facility. It operated a makeshift library unworthy of its functions. The current management remodeled, furnished, and equipped the abandoned library building with modern facilities. An e-library facility has also been provided for online access to relevant books, publications, and other academic resources. To further widen access to learning, the management leveraged an already deployed ICT infrastructure in the academy to commence its online virtual lectures for cadets. Um, the ICT team is robust. Online lectures were one of the first in the country to do that. And we did it successfully for almost nine months until we were able to come back after the lockdown. To further motivate the students to give their best, the current management of the academy introduced a policy of providing each cadet with learning materials, laptops and relevant publications, books of reference are provided for all cadets. This initiative facilitated learning in the academy and also consolidated on the improved standard of training. In, in terms of uh, educational uh, you know, equipment, the school has done a great job like right now it makes learning more more explainable and I think it's one of the things that we as cadets are really enjoying the school right now. A review of the existing curriculum was conducted with inputs from the International Maritime Organization IMO, United Nations Institute for Training and Research, UNITAR. Association of Marine Engineers and Ship Surveyors of Nigeria, AMES, National Association of Master Mariners, NAMM, and the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA. In compliance with the International Maritime Organization's directives, all the courses currently offered in the Academy have been structured in line with the International Convention on Standards of Training, Certification and Watchkeeping, STCW. They have better training. 
That's another thing I think I would want to talk about. Their predecessors, they just have one certificate, but these ones, when they are graduating, they have at least seven certificates. Courses that online they would have come back to do after graduation, they now do it here before they go free of charge. We are giving a complete package and the cadet certificate has more value because of the installation of these simulators. Before now, the academy suffered from over-bloated enrollment. The number of cadets intake was about 1,800 per session, almost seven times more than it required. This was reduced to between 250 and 261 in the 2018-2019 and 2019-2020 academic sessions. One must be within the age of 18 and 22. You must have a secondary school certificate with minimum of five credits in relevant subjects. One must be physically fit and because of that, we usually arrange both oral and physical interview. After which, if you are found fit, you will be considered for admission. For years, the Academy's auditorium was abandoned and left in a dilapidated state. Today, the Maritime Academy of Nigeria boasts of one of the best standard auditoriums in the country. The facility has been remodeled to 1,000 seating capacity, furnished and equipped with ultra-modern multimedia devices and cinema equipment. Another abandoned project, the Academy's parade ground, is being remodeled and converted to a mini sports arena. The project houses facilities such as swimming pool or survival pool, a five-a-side soccer pitch, as well as a basketball, volleyball, and tennis court. We never had a survival pool for, that's what you can call a swimming pool, for over 19 years. The one they had was built, and um, if you put water in the morning by night, it's gone. They wanted to use 285 million naira to renovate when I came. I said, no way. I went to Abuja, got somebody to come. The person did two for us for 85 million. Today they are working. There are now functional power generators that provide electricity to the entire campus daily. This has significantly improved training activities as well as the standard of living on campus. Solar-powered streetlights have also been installed in all the internal roads in the academy and this has improved vision of road users at night and has also reduced the cost of fueling. With his ideas gaining momentum, the new administrator turned his attention to capacity upgrade. So far, the academy has trained more than 15 staff on the newly acquired simulators employed additional foreign professionals, including two captains, master mariners, one from India and one from Nigeria, as well as a chief engineer from India. The faculty in a training institution is key. So the directorate helps in sourcing for relevant places that the faculty can attend some courses of study to help in delivering uh, training to the cadets. Transfer of technology. Local and foreign training programs have become commonplace and the tides are of good tidings of steady progress. We're also working on upgrading the academy, you know, into a degree awarding institution, but not a conventional university because it's a specialized um, institution. Supervise, go in between and make sure that things happen and every process works based on external rules. On the hymn, the security and welfare of students and staff have been given a better lease of life. For instance, by our sourcing feeding, cadet accommodation and meal have improved greatly, both in quality and quantity. Let me talk more on the accommodations. I think Academy is one of the best when it comes to accommodation because whatever I need, I just go get it and off I go. With the additional accommodation provided, cadets are now accommodated two persons per room, a far cry from the 18 persons per room that was the case in the institution.
The management has also completed and furnished two abandoned blocks of hostel with capacities for 200 and 100 cadets, respectively, as part of efforts to give the institution a complete positive makeover. The current management has completed over 19 blocks of two-bedroom twin bungalow each and has also remodeled an abandoned shopping mall into a staff accommodation. The completion of these projects has provided more decent accommodation for staff as over 70% of them now live on campus. Uh, we have seen transformation in Maritime Academy. And this transformation, I can boldly say, started from this regime. The environment there now is conducive both for the trainees and with the instructors. Attitude now change among the staff. It's a lot better than what it used to be. For the retired Commodore, the journey has not been like a boulevard stream with roses. Indeed, he says the success has come with a lot of hurdles, opposition, or some sort of contest with those perceived to have been beneficiaries of the old order of decay, ineptitude, and corruption. I've received about 6,000 petitions, and the National Assembly have received same on, on the academy, all fake. The question is, what is their problem within the fence? It's because they can't eat any longer. There's no more funds to be looted or money to be shared. So it's just literally, um, you know, we'll say housekeeping, proper housekeeping and, and tidying up and re-engineering and reorganizing and showing focus and dedication has actually improved um, these challenges. Again, I think the area and everybody has seen the political will of government and determined that we're going to do this, we're going to place this academy where it ought to have been. We're playing catch up, trying to meet up. And part of what we are now looking at is how to grow and ensure that not only do we produce seafarers in Nigeria, but we're able to attract other Africans who want to come in and learn um, and become seafarers. Despite paucity of funds, the new management has been able to transform the ruins of the Maritime Academy into a world-class service delivery institution. We are currently working to add the helicopter and water escape training as Hewitt. Uh, the pool is already getting very close to completion. The simulator has been delivered to the academy very recently. And uh, we're expanding our frontiers. What we decided to do is embark on heavy, uh, uh, heavy um, communication with young people in secondary schools. And we invited them here for seminars, especially the girl child. Anyone who knew the academy before 2017 agrees that things have taken a turn for the better. The Maritime Academy of Nigeria Man is now a sinusoid of all eyes in the industry. We also have seats in our class. Well, like before, we sit like um, five seats in a chair, but now just two in a chair. The director has also improved um, our advanced courses like the STCW, OCTF, and the rest. We did not see one abandoned project. All the abandoned projects have become complete building that are in use. So you have a modern hostel for the students. You have the modern library with e-library. You have simulator rooms. You have smart classrooms. You have the ICT departments. I mean, you would love to be in a learning environment like Man Forum today. During their oversight visit to the academy, Chairman House Committee on Maritime Safety, Education and Administration, Linda Ikbeazu, admitted that the transformation of the academy is evidence that competence supersedes political consideration. It has been a puddle against the current, resisting strong winds of discouragement. But the determined hands and the steady gaze of the seafarers are unrelenting, sure that the destination of success is in sight.
But I think direction has been pointed. Anybody coming in here would ensure that he, he or she must not, you know, go below the standards they've met or, or they've met on board. And I'm proud to say that today the dreams of the Ministry of Transportation to have a World Class Academy has been uh, achieved. And um, that's it. It's a national institution we should all be proud of. It will be sad to see the academy fall again, but I pray it never happens. Soon, the calm waters should bring to positive reckoning an African institution of maritime excellence. Many will say shedding the previous cobwebs of inertia is success in itself. But like the seafarer, there are always new waves to conquer and new shores to reach. Shores to reach.